So what's up everybody? The question I get asked more than anything is, which Baofeng should I buy? But the question I get asked second most than anything is, which antenna should I put on my Baofeng? See guys, long time ago, rubber ducky antennas, the antennas that come with ham radios, have gotten a bad name for being crappy. Well, I decided I'd buy a lot of antennas and do a simple crash course, meaning I'm going to do an apples to apples comparison, I'm going to do an equally bad situation for all antennas, and I'm going to compare them. I'm going to see how far I can transmit from my home to a given location, and I'll go out as far as I have to until the last antenna stops performing in a way that I can understand. So I ended up buying four antennas, and I had one that I already owned. It's kind of like, uh, let's test this anyway because I've been using it and I wanted to see how effective it is. Uh, one of them is an honorable mention. I did it because a fan asked, and oh, Oh boy, don't buy a stubby antenna. Spoiler alert, don't buy a stubby antenna. But to be fair, let's call it out by name. It's a Diamond SRH805S wideband receive coverage. It may be a good receiver, it is a garbage transmitter. Next we have the Nagoya 701. This could be a counterfeit. I've had this for many years before known counterfeits were known. Then I have the Nagoya 717 like this. It's a little floppy, whippy one with aluminum kind of billet looking connector. This is nice. Then we have the Expert Power, what was it? XP669C, 7.5 inch. And then the Big Kahuna, as I called it, is the uh, Nagoya NA771 VHF UHF that has the little QR code in the bottom there. This guy is very long at 15.6 inches. The general statement that I'll make for this entire video is just to give you some cliff notes as we go. Uh, longer is better with 2 meter and 70 centimeters. So if you don't mind this thing not because it's heavy and it, it can generate a lot of mass. Um, if you set this down onto an antenna or I'm sorry if you set this onto a radio and you leave it on a table and it's going back and forth it will fall over. Okay guys so keep that in mind. So this is uh, KI6NAZ sitting in front of my house. Antenna. Let's see how I can, how far I can get. So I'm in a suburb here. I'm just gonna go down the road, tenth of a mile maybe. High power BFF 8HB stubby antenna, and then we'll try the rest of them too. Okay, one tenth of a mile. Let's try the stubby antenna. KI6 NAZ radio check. KI6 NAZ radio check. Nothing. Dead silence. Sound like it keyed up there for a second. KI6NAZ. No. Let's try the rubber ducky. See, this is why BNC connectors are nice, because you can just swap them out really quickly. Rubber ducky antenna from a tenth of a mile from my... KI6NAZ. KI6NAZ. Is that great? 5, S5 string. Is that pretty good? Okay, aside from the stubby, funky antenna, this is the first aftermarket antenna, Expert Power. Uh, it's a six inch. KI6 NAZ. Wow, full power. S9. KI6 NAZ on the Expert Power antenna. Very good. What's next? Next up is my Nagoya 701. Possibly counterfeit. Works great. S9. Okay, now my uh, most aesthetically pleasing antenna, the Nagoya 717, milled aluminum connector, see that? With a thin little whip. KS9, KI6NAZ radio test. Okay, KI6NAZ with the big kahuna, Nagoya 771. S9, full power, looks good. Okay, let's go quarter mile, 0.25 miles away. Understand, this isn't a, a range test. This is a, a comparison, an apples to apples comparison. So they're in equally crappy conditions and I'm making them work in areas that are obstructed by all the houses here and all that stuff, right? This is not an ideal situation. But since they all have to deal with the situation at the same time, it's a good comparison. So we're going for uh, 0.25 miles, which will be right up here. We'll go 0.3, right around the corner up here. Got a couple houses in between us, some trees. This is a real life uh, test, kind of, if you will. So at, at three miles, or 0.3 miles, sorry, 0.3 miles, the stubby's dead. Let's try the rubber ducky just in case. I'm pretty sure this is gonna be dead though. KI6 NAZ radio check, total dead. Total nothing there. Okay, back to the expert power. KI6 NAZ. KI6 NAZ. 
radio test. Uh, that's an S6, S7 with the extra with the power, power antenna. antenna. KI6 and AZ. Okay, so that was actually pretty good. The Nagoya 701, Nagoya 071, KI6 and AZ radio test with the Nagoya 701. Found an F5. That's pretty good. KI6NAZ radio test with the Nagoya 717. About an S5. It's also pretty good. Sounds good. Okay, the big the big boomer. I gotta roll down the window. KI6771 Nagoya, Nagoya antenna, antenna test. test. This is a full S7. S7. Also pretty good. Okay, so that was uh that was 0 0.3 miles. So let's uh let's take the turn up here and we'll go to a full half mile, which I think is at the end of the street, and see how we do. Uh, like I said, this is just a comparison shootout. This is not a, a proper in the lab effective test or readout of the antennas. This is just some on the street testing. You can do better than this, by all means go for it, but if you needed to pick one antenna or two antennas, this is gonna give you a pretty good idea of what to get. Okay, here we go, we're back to the expert power. KI6NAZ, KI6NAZ, uh, that's an S4. KI6NAZ radio test with the expert power. Expert power, expert power. There we go. So depending on where I hold my head, you get a better signal. KI6NAZ, radio test. Okay, Nagoya 701 at half mile. KI6NAZ radio test. KI6NAZ radio test. KI6 NAZ radio test with the Nagoya 701 and a half mile. S4. Not great. Alright, this is the Nagoya 717 at half mile. 717 Nagoya at half mile. KI6 NAZ radio test. S4. Okay. So this is not as the crow fly testing, right? I've made a couple of right turns, but generally pretty straight. Uh, we're gonna head over to a park right now, see if we can, oh, look at this. Is this a new antenna somebody put up? Oh yeah, all right. So I'm going over to this park with the idea being that this uh, wide open spaces might help my takeoff angle uh, to get to the radios. It's gonna be about, uh, three-fourths of a mile a straight shot if you're flying uh, from my home in fact we could probably test this with my drone okay, okay. KI6 NAZ about, about an S4 single strength, 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 strength out of an S, S the expert power antenna we're about three quarters of a mile from my house the, the park I can face is helping pretty noisy KI6 NAZ KI6 NAZ with the Nagoya 701, three quarters of a mile from the house, about an S4 signal strength. Pretty noisy. About the same as the expert power. The Nagoya 717, Nagoya 717, from three quarters of a mile from the house, S4 signal strength. Very similar to the other Nagoyas and the expert power. KI6 NAZ with the big kahuna. The 771 Nagoya, then an S4, S5. Bit solid, more solid copy. Yeah. Okay, we're gonna get a full mile away. Relatively a full mile. And we're gonna see if we can we can try with the remainders, see how we do. Okay, KI6 NAZ from the expert power. Yeah, I'm 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 getting there. But very badly. Breaking up pretty bad. A lot of noise. Expert power. KI6 NAZ. The Nagoya 701 KI6 NAZ radio test. S3 at best. Broken. Mostly noise. Not good. Not good at all. KI6 NAZ from the Nagoya 717. S3 at best, and mostly noise. KI6 NAZ radio test. The Nagoya 771 Big Kahuna S4. And it's totally copyable, legible, good. 
So at the end of the day, the best bang for your buck is the Nagoya NA771 at about $17 on Amazon uh, Prime, that is. it Again, longer is better. You're going to get the same effect if you go with another brand like Diamond. Longer is better in this case. Generally, it had a pretty broadband coverage. It was probably equally as good on 2 meter as it was 70 centimeter. I know the numbers show that it was better on 2 meters, but um, still performed admirably in both. Now, aesthetically, my favorite one is the Nagoya 717. I, I like this really thin uh, whip antenna, and I like this aluminum billet. It feels good. It feels really good in your hand. But something happened while I was using it. While, was connected, while it was connected to my bag, I slid it in my bag, walked around a little bit, and the aerial got bent. And it actually left a permanent kink in the metal here. So I changed my mind. I recommend the Expert Power. The Expert Power, very similar numbers to the Nagoya, the little tiny one. A lot more rigid um, antenna, much more resilient. The knurling is actually pretty nice and I think actually looks pretty good on the Baofeng BFF8 HP, for example. And something very interesting to point out, the Nagoya 717 is actually $15.99 on Amazon and it's called a Super Whip. Interestingly enough, the Expert Power XP669C is only $10, and it performs just as well as the Nagoya in most of the cases that you're most likely going to use the antenna. Um, again, I think the Neuralink looks really nice there. So what are some of my takeaways from this? Well, uh, one, VHF UHF is a line of sight radio transmission, so if you have a clear sight to your target, you're going to perform very well. Once you start putting buildings and trees and rock formations and other things in between you and your target, your effective range is going to drop like a rock. The reason why we get such good range when we're talking to repeaters is because repeaters are way high on mountains and we can just kind of beam our RF directly to it and we get really good radius. An antenna like this, this Expert Power, or the Nagoya, um, I can go almost 50 miles uh, straight shot down to a mountain because it's line of sight and I'm directly in the path of that sight. So don't be discouraged. These antennas perform actually much better in non tough environments. I kind of made the test really hard where I put the receive radio because I didn't want to drive that far from home. The advantage though is it's apples to apples. The comparison is the comparison and which one performs the best is going to perform better in all kinds of situations. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I truly had fun making it and I learned a lot more about HTs. I thought I knew a pretty decent amount of stuff when it came to like dipoles and antennas for HF because I built a lot more antennas in that area. I learned pretty quickly again that the grounding, how the chassis works, how your human body plays a part in it, and it's all very important. I'm going to stick with the expert power on my BFF8 HP. I think it's kind of the best combo of cheap antenna with cheap radio that I can go ahead and beat up on and smash around. Regarding my FT60R, the receive antenna, I wanted to mention, I do have a Diamond SRH77CA on it, and it will live on here forever. It's a super long antenna. It makes it very good receiver. I've already mentioned this is one of the best front ends in the market when it comes to HT. But there you have it. Keep in mind, these antennas are not compatible. The SMAs, while the connector is the same, one's a female and one's male on the different radios. So make sure you pick the right one. If you have any confusion, go to the link below to my Amazon influencer page and it will point out the right one for you. Hey guys, so that will do it. If you enjoyed this video and like to help me make more videos, maybe go check out my Patreon. I've got some Patreon-only rewards that are shown on the page. If you find them interesting, maybe you'd like to give me a buck, five bucks, whatever. If you haven't already, please subscribe and make sure to hit that little bell icon so you get notified when I post an update. Remember, I have a Facebook page, Haas Nasi, on Facebook. You can ask me questions there, ham-related. Or even better, go to the Ham Radio Crash Course page, which is on Facebook as well. You get a lot more conversation going. There's a lot more people that can help you out. So I hope that covers it. I'll talk to you guys soon. See ya.